Hi, today's video is a bit different. What I have here is the Kronos 2.1 HD camera. Now, before you complain about the title of the video, technically this camera does not have the highest frame rate of any slow motion camera that you can get. However, the reason we call it the best camera is because of the fact that it's affordable and you can get a very high frame rate. Now, if you're willing to spend the money that the slow-mo guys do, or a movie studio, and buy one of the phantom cameras that can support a few hundred thousand frames per second, yes, those are better. However, the price of those are similar to a small house. This is more similar to the cameras that we use for our regular daily filming of our videos. Maybe with the lenses included, it's a little bit more expensive, but comparable. Now before I go into the overview of this camera, uh, if you'd like just the fun part, you can skip to this time here and just watch the slow motion footage that we took later. But for everybody that's interested in how the camera works, you can keep watching and I'll go over how to set it up, what the specifications are, anything that you might be interested in. So again, this is the Kronos 2.1. They also make a camera called the Kronos 1.4. It's an older model, however, it's cheaper, it's about half the price, and it technically has a higher frame rate. The reason it has a higher frame rate is because it has a lower resolution for that frame rate. So the Kronos 2.1 has a maximum frame rate of 26,420 frames per second at a resolution of 640 by 96. It also has a maximum resolution of 1920 by 1080, which is why it's called HD. The max frame rate of that resolution is 1000 frames per second, which is comparable to the very expensive phantom cameras. The phantom cameras are only a little bit better at that resolution. When you get down to very low resolutions, the phantom cameras happen to have higher frame rates. However, again, they're not affordable. If you look at the Kronos 1.4 camera, which is their older model, at a lower resolution than the Kronos 2.1, at 336 by 96, they have a max frame rate of 38,565, so very fast. Faster than what this camera is, which is the 2.1. Since it's called the Kronos 1.4 camera, it's not HD. Its max resolution is 1280 by 1024 at a frame rate of 1000 frames per second, roughly. As you can see on the table, I have the camera, an SD card, that fits in this SD card slot here, and then an adapter and a lens. And just to be clear, the lens that we have here is their cheapest lens that you can get that they've tested with this model. It's a $30 to $50 lens, so it's very cheap, and we're only using it to test it for this first trial run. For our next upcoming video, we've purchased a better lens, which is more comparable to the ones that we use for our current cameras. So the image is only gonna get better with our upcoming videos. Now this lens is a non-zoom lens. It can't zoom. Uh, it's, I think it has an f-stop of 1.8, 1.4, and it's 35 millimeters. So it works for what you, you might need. However, if you're buying a camera of this, this cost, you might want to get a better lens than a $30 lens. On the Kronos website, they have recommendations for lenses, lens mounts. Uh, I'll provide a link in the description below if you'd like to see those. And they've tested a multitude of lenses. And if you have trouble finding one that works perfectly for yours, I would recommend contacting them because their customer service is very good. They would recommend a lens that you would need for your certain situation. They'll tell you what adapters you need. They'll tell you exactly how much vignetting there is because of course there's a chip size like with any camera there's a chip and so you want to make sure that the lens that you get covers the entire chip and doesn't have any vignetting where you get the black edges around the corner. This lens supposedly doesn't do that and I didn't notice that. However, when you get down to very low resolutions and high frame rates like the 640 by 96 at 26,000 frames per second, I do notice that the exposure is very low, but I'm guessing that's probably because of the lens that we're using. It's a very cheap lens. So with the next upcoming video that we have, not with the demonstrations in this one, you'll probably see a great improvement in the quality. So I would recommend if you ever need a slow motion camera, I would probably pick this one. Obviously you can use your iPhone, but that's I think a maximum of 240 frames per second. So 
at the same resolution, you can get a thousand frames per second with this, or you can lower the resolution and get a maximum of 26,000, or you can spend even less money and buy their older model and get a maximum of 38,000 frames per second, which is pretty great for the prices that they're offering. Now, if you're getting bored, skip to the fun part. Now what I'm going to do is overview the camera and just show you some of the features, the buttons, how it works, and then I'll go into even more in-depth detail and show you exactly how to set it up, first time use, what you would do when you would first get this camera. Okay, here's the camera, and I have an SD card for it, which fits in this slot on top, which is where the SD card goes. Obviously, the camera is not writing directly to this, uh, how it works is it has internal storage, which you can pick. The internal RAM is extremely fast, which is why it's able to capture at such high frame rates. And then you insert an SD card that it then will transfer over to the SD card. Again, we have our extremely low cost lens here. And this can theoretically screw directly into the camera. I forgot to take the... Uh, cover off. If you take the cover off, you can see the chip. It's a little hard to see. Maybe you can see it with that camera. As you can see, screwing it in. And now it's screwed in, right? So you would think, oh, nice. This works. Perfect. No, it doesn't. You do have to use this sort of extension. However, they do come with the camera. They come with the lenses. No issue. It's not that hard to figure out. It just took me a, a try or two to realize I can't focus right. And the reason you can't focus right is it's not the right distance. And so if you increase the distance between the chip and the lens with the adapter slash extension, you screw the extension in, then you screw in the lens into the extension. Works the same way, same thread. There you go. That's the camera. And theoretically, if you take this SD card, you plug this in, it works. So obviously we have the lens here. There's a cooling fan uh, on the top. You can see the power button, record button, slash trigger button, where the SD card goes. You have a shutter control dial here. And then on this side, we have all the ports. So you got HDMI, you can hook it up to a separate monitor. We've got microphone, headphone, we've got a trigger control and ethernet. I believe you can use the ethernet also for trigger control. Trigger control, you can start recording, stop recording, simple. You also got USB connection, you've got eSATA, and then you have this port, which is for ancillary devices. The eSATA port is important because if you hook up a separate hard drive, you don't have to use the SD card to copy to. You can do it a little bit faster and use an eSATA port for a hard drive. We don't want to damage the camera. However, we don't want to hurt ourselves either. And so we're going to be farther away than the camera is. And we'll be using the triggering port for that. It also has triggering options built into it that I'll explain later. When you first get the camera, it's in a specialty power off mode, where even if you press the power on button, it will not turn on until you hook up the AC adapter, which is here. When you plug that in, and then you power it on, it will then turn off shipping mode, which stops it from turning on from accidentally hitting the power button. But I've already done that. And so now if I hit the power button, you hold it down for about a second or two. It then boots up. You can hear the fan turn on. It takes about 20 seconds, 30 seconds to boot up. Okay, it's booted up. Now, you can see here on the main screen, it's obviously black. I have the lens cover on. You can see there's a shutter slider here which you can do on the touch screen. It is touch screen. I haven't taken off the little film yet. I'm going to protect it. You can also use this dial here for shutter control. So you can raise it, lower it. The first thing that you would want to do is since you've inserted the SD card, you would go to util, utility. So you press that and you can go to storage and you can say format SD card. I've already done that. So it's formatted. There's also a bunch of other settings in here which aren't that necessary for you to know about if you're just getting it. The second thing you would want to do after you set up the SD card is go to record settings. Now, they have basic presets here where you can choose from the 1920 by 1080 at 1000 frames per second, 
you can choose that option or you can choose down to 640 by 96 at 24,046 frames per second. Now you can customize these resolutions. They recommend you using the presets that they've already calibrated. So for example, we'll go up to 1920 by 1080 at 1000 frames per second. You can see all these basic settings max it usually maxes out the frame rate exposure max it's maxed digital gain i never adjust that we say okay and now it's set for 1920 by 1080 at a thousand frames per second and you can see that there an exposure is 99 percent 100 percent. there we go just using the shutter now you can see the battery level at the bottom is 73 percent 11.32 volts and then you can go to the second option, not super important, but this is trigger settings. If you were going to use a trigger on here, they also have exposure settings where if it gets too bright, it'll trigger it, anything like that. Advanced settings, but if you need it, it's there. The next one that you want to do is black calibration. When you press that, it performs your black calibration. It gets rid of any stripes, lines, it makes sure that the shadows and the black portions of your video are actually black. You always want to do that. That's necessary. And you want to make sure that the lens cap is on when you do the black calibration or else it's not going to work properly if you get any sort of light in. And then there's white balance, which they also have presets for. And so you can say 8000K cloudy sky, 6500K noon daylight, 5600K average day daylight, so on. So you can choose whatever you think looks best and you can obviously view it on the screen. And then there's play, that's after you've recorded. And so that's pretty much it for the overview of the camera. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you some of the tests that we took with this camera at our shop back home. Right now we're at the warehouse uh, where you saw the videos of the LRAD device tested with our volunteers. And so let's get to the fun part and let's see some of the slow motion footage that I took with this camera. So that's the end of the video. We're hoping to reach 500,000 subscribers by Christmas Day. So if you could help us out with that, we would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching till the end. You have a great day. Bye.